from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist and the feast of the evangelist, Saint Luke. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Teresa Joseph from London, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received for the return of their children to Sunday Mass, for souls in purgatory, especially our parents, brothers and sisters, and for world peace. The second is an anonymous donor from, on, from Toronto, Ontario, in thanksgiving for the daily TV Mass. The third is Winifred Grocourt from Edmonton, Alberta, for the repose of the soul of Joseph Grocourt. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. To celebrate this Eucharist more worthily now, let us call to the God of mercy and compassion to forgive us our sins and to purify our minds and hearts. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Christ of mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And on this feast, let us glorify God as we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> O God, who chose St. Luke to reveal by his preaching and writings the mystery of your love for the poor, grant that those who already glory in your name may persevere as one heart and one soul, and that all nations may merit to see your salvation. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Do your best to come to me soon, Timothy, for Demas, in love with this per present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. You also must be aware of him, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first offense, no one came to my support but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. From among his disciples, the Lord appointed 70 and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, <clears throat> the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house, and if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person, but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for a laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Luke, who, as scripture scholars tell us, is the acknowledged evangelist of the third gospel that we find in the, in the New Testament. So who was Luke? They claim that he was a physician, and he was the one who treated physicians and doctors with a great deal of kindness in his writings. Unlike Mark, if you remember the story of the woman who had a hemorrhage, Mark says she went to all the doctors and she lost all her money, and instead of getting better, she became worse. Luke simply says she had a hemorrhage and Jesus cured her. He's very gentle with doctors because he himself was one. 
Another thing we know about Luke was that he was not a Jew, but a Gentile. And the whole way he writes the gospel is for the Gentile audience. And therefore, you won't find what you find in Matthew's gospel. Matthew is constantly saying, as it was written in the scriptures or according to the scriptures. Well, the Gentiles knew that the Jewish people had scriptures, but they were not familiar with it, so they did not know what was prophesied, and therefore Luke will not use that phrase. Luke will also speak of Jesus as the Messiah, as the Redeemer, but he will not say the Redeemer that you were looking forward to, the Messiah that you had expected through the prophets. So what was Luke's main theme? And Luke's main theme was to proclaim the good news as we hear in the gospel today. Jesus sent out the 70, sent out the 72 and said, go and proclaim the good news. And that is what the main task of the disciples and the apostles was. Some of them did it through preaching. They were orators and orators were very famous Orators had the same fame and reputation in our baseball and football games today as being a qualified pitcher or being a, a quarterback. They had all that reputation. And they would be people who stood up in front of everybody and proclaimed with a beautiful voice. And people always wanted their sons to go to these orators to learn how to proclaim. That is where the money lay. And so Jesus is calling his apostles and disciples. He is not calling the qualified apostles. He is not calling the qualified disciples. But because he calls them, he qualifies them to preach the good news. And so some of them would proclaim the news by speaking, others by writing. And they would go into the synagogues and go into the marketplaces, to the arenas and the agoras, and proclaim the good news. Proclaiming the good news, you will find, is a part of both the first reading and the gospel today. In fact, evangelization is the main characteristic of our church. Pope Paul VI, the pope that was before John Paul I and John Paul II and Pope Benedict, he was the one who said, the very nature of the church is to evangelize, to proclaim the good news. And the moment the church stops proclaiming the good news, it ceases to be the church. Now, very often we mistake being evangelical as being people who want to go out and convert the whole world. Conversion is not your job, nor my job. We are simply called to proclaim the good news. Conversion comes from God. God is the one who changes the minds and the hearts. God makes people, the heart soft enough, if it is hard as stone, to accept the good news. And so you and I have been called to proclaim the good news in season and out of season. The problem is that there are ups and downs in this proclaim, proclamation of the good news. And we see that in that first reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. Well, I do not know whether Paul actually wrote it or a disciple of Paul, but it seems to have that touch of Paul right in the middle of it all. And he seems to have a senior moment and he describes the church in all sorts of ways which makes it most human. You can almost see it in our parishes today. He speaks about the ups and the downs. He says there are some people who will preach the good news and then run out of steam and just give up. There are other people who will preach the good news but then they are distracted or attracted to things that got nothing to do with the good news and they are left by the wayside. And there are still some others who get simply disillusioned and they say, what's the point? And they leave off. In fact, that is the story of the parable of that Jesus tells us about the seed in the ground. Some fall on the wayside, some fall on the path, some fall on fertile ground. And Paul spoke about Christians and Paul spoke about Titus. And he also spoke about the coppersmith that was speaking against him. So in the proclamation of good news, it's not a piece of cake. It is hard work. It means fidelity. It means constant hope in the Lord who calls us to proclaim the good news. And in our own times, we will find the same thing. We will find parish priests that are dynamic, 
parish priests that can preach, parish priests that can go out and, and attract people to come to God. But as Karl Rahner said, the parish priest is not an angel parachuted from heaven. He is formed and taken from among the people of God. He's got his faults, he's got his qualities, he's got his skills, and he's got his defects. So pray for him that he may be faithful to the good news, that he may not be disillusioned, he may not run out of stamina, he might not be distracted and fall by the wayside. We have got a great task ahead of it. There's a treasure that is so beautiful that you cannot measure it in silver, gold, and diamonds. And yet the Lord has entrusted it in earthen vessels like you and me. Let us go out and proclaim like Luke did, proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. God bless you all. Let us pray. For men and women who continue to proclaim the good news, not merely by their words, by their way of life, and the way they reach out to the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all our sponsors today, that the Lord may answer their prayers, that the Lord may answer their petitions, and the prayers of each one of us gathered here in the Loretto Abbey and across Canada. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for peace in the world, especially in troubled spots like Syria, in Pakistan, in Sri Lanka, and in Sudan. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for an intelligence to understand the word of God, to make it dear to us, so that we may be proclaimers, proclaimers of good news with optimism and with joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us and continue to give us day by day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant through our, your heavenly gifts that we may serve you in freedom, O Lord, so that the offerings we make on the feast of St. Luke may bring us healing and give, us, and give you glory. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be the lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and to offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. And therefore, now with and for all ages unending, with all the hosts of heaven, we sing out our, to your glory, crying out as we sing.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Luke, the evangelist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer to the Holy Spirit? Descend, Holy Spirit of life. Come down into our hearts that we may live. Descend into our emptiness that emptiness may be filled. Descend into the dust that dust may flower. Descend into the dark that the light may shine in darkness. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that what we have received from your holy altar may sanctify us and make us strong in the faith of the gospel which St. Luke proclaimed. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace. Our thanks to our three donors for the gift of this Mass. interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.